This Week at Interior. Thank you, Mr. President, for the profound action you are taking today to permanently protect the homelands of our ancestors. Secretary Deb Holland applauded President Biden's actions to restore protections to three national monuments this week. The president reestablished the boundaries at Bears Ears and Grand Staircase Escalante National Monuments in Utah and restored management conditions to the Northeast Canyons and Seamounts Marine National Monument in the Northwest Atlantic Ocean. Secretary Holland said the historical connection between indigenous peoples and Bears Ears is undeniable and is proud to see this living landscape protected. Gwatsi Haupa, happy Indigenous Peoples Day, everyone. Today we celebrate the rich traditions, diverse cultures, and resilience of Indigenous communities. Secretary Holland celebrated Indigenous Peoples Day Monday while running in the Boston Marathon to honor the first stewards of this land. Indigenous Peoples Day is a time when we remember the sacrifices of our ancestors and their survival during the dark eras of colonization and assimilation. In remarks to the offshore wind industry this week, Secretary Holland outlined the path forward for future offshore wind leasing to meet the Biden-Harris administration's goal to deploy 30 gigawatts of offshore wind energy by 2030. The secretary announced plans for the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management to potentially hold up to seven new offshore lease sales by 2025. BOEM Director Amanda Lefton joined her at the event to outline the Bureau's plans and stakeholder engagement strategies. It's National Wildlife Refuge Week and a chance to celebrate the great network of lands and waters that conserves and protects Americans' wildlife heritage. The National Wildlife Refuge System provides vital habitat for thousands of native species, including sandhill cranes, American alligators, bison, and sea turtles. Each year, tens of millions of Americans visit refuges to enjoy fishing, hunting, hiking, and wildlife watching. On Wednesday, the Bronx and Harlem Rivers Urban Waters Federal Partnership celebrated the 10th anniversary on the High Bridge over the Harlem River in New York City. Led locally by the U.S. Geological Survey and supported by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the Bronx and Harlem Rivers UWFP works to help overburden and underserved communities reconnect to their waterways, reduce the adverse impacts of urbanization on water quality and human health, and restore degraded riverfronts and watersheds while pursuing and environmental justice. The Office of Insular Affairs announced its allocation of $55 million from the Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Security Act to the insular areas. The funds were distributed to address the impacts from COVID-19, including to purchase medical equipment, cleaning supplies and food, and distribution of testing kits, protective gear and vaccines. Funds were also distributed to several non-government organizations in Guam, Hawaii, and in the mainland to assist insular area populations disproportionately impacted by the pandemic. Our social media picture of the week comes from the National Wildlife Refuge Week. It was a moonlit night at Arthur R. Marshall Loxahatchee National Wildlife Refuge in Florida. Part of the Everglades ecosystem, this vital refuge provides home and protection for endangered and threatened wildlife. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. That's This Week at Interior.